Well, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. This is the Minister M.L. Kimball coming to you live here on this blessed, blessed Sabbath day. Uh, I wanted to give you uh, some more words here on this day. You know, the, the Bible says that we are to rest on this day, and boy, have I rested today, and it's been a beautiful day to do such thing. I tell you what, the, the weather's been wonderful. I'm sitting in my backyard looking at the greenery and the trees, and uh, the weather's just awesome today, so... Uh, I, I thank the Most High for the Sabbath day. You should be doing the same. I don't care what scamified church told you tomorrow. Sunday is the Sabbath day. That's a lie. It's not true. You can look it up yourself. The Catholic Church even came out and said that they changed the Sabbath day. So understand something that the reason that they changed the Sabbath day, again, I only say things you can verify yourself. They changed the Sabbath day to Sunday to match the sun god worship. Because they were into paganistic sun god worship and they worship the sun. So you study that out for yourself. But I'm telling you right now, some scam told you that the Sabbath day is on Sunday and it doesn't even matter what day and you can worship him every day. No, the Bible declares that that day was a day set aside, set apart, and it was to never be changed. You used to find out in the book of Jubilees and the book of Enoch, as well as the book of Jasher, that they all recognized the Sabbath day, and it was supposed to be held until forever. Forever means forever, so I don't care what they told you later. It's awful funny how they came up with this uh, this uh, additional deity that, uh, that goes against everything that the Most High said in the Old Testament, and you're telling me that, that it's the same thing? No, I don't want to hear that. Son follow what their father does so if you're telling me that Jesus was the son and he followed the father then don't tell me because he went on the cross that you don't have to follow Sabbath. you don't have to uh, recognize the Sabbath day anymore you scam this was something that Enoch said in the beginning from Enoch it went on and it passed down through Enoch to, uh, down to Noah Enoch was Noah's grandfather Enoch saw the beginning and the end and so the Sabbath day is supposed to be kept and recognized as the day of rest. That's what the book says. So again, I'm only going to tell you what the scripture says. You can look it up for yourself, but the Sabbath day was changed by the Catholic Church. They even came out and said it. Go to YouTube and just Google it. It'll be, I'm sure a video or something will pop up. As I did go, I went down these rabbit holes and I've already seen what they have methodically done to confuse the people of Yahuwah. So regardless of what you may feel, today is the Sabbath day and I implore you to give the Most High some glory. Thank Him for all that He's done. Thank Him for keeping you throughout the week. Thank Him for keeping your family. Thank Him for keeping your finances. You need to give Him some praise today. You owe Him the praise. You owe Him because you don't have the, the strength or the courage or the power to breathe on your own. You are breathing because the Most High allowed you to breathe. So you owe Him some praise today and you definitely owe Him some recognition of the day that He said that we must keep as a day of rest. So with that being said, my subject today for you today is this. Um, I don't know why, for whatever reason that, uh, you, uh, you, I don't know what reason this is, but you can take a look and scan around and look at today's churches. Very, 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 very little churches deal with the book of Revelation. And I, and I often ask myself why. It's because none of them, most of the time, the preacher don't study. That's the reality. That's the truth. Because the reality of it is, a lot of us was told this lie about what's called the rapture, which we already know is a scam and was a lie that was again given to us by the Catholic Church. Um, and, 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 and so we find that that is not even true, but yet that's what they told us. That's what they told me back in the day. They told me that the rapture was going to rapture us, out, us saints out of here and don't, don't get left behind and yada, 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 all the scams that came behind all of that. But they also told us that before um, the saints start getting their heads cut off, that's when the rapture would happen. Well, then what about those saints that are over there getting their heads cut off right now? What makes you think you're better than them to where you're going to get raptured out and they're not? There's no such thing as rapture. And if you study, you will find this out in the book of Revelation. There's no evidence of rapture anywhere in the scripture besides what they like to pull from Second Thessalonians, which basically they go there to pull the white robes out. And we know that there's going to be white robes, but we know that there's going to be a lot of things that are going to happen before the white robes will show up. So don't think you're just going to magically, all your sinning that you've been doing in your life, all you had to do is say, I'm sorry, and you're going to just rise up in the sky on Inspector Gadget, uh, 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 
elevator of some sort and not see anything. If that was the case, then why did he say he who endures to the end will be saved? What do you have to endure if you are going to be raptured out of here? So what I want you to do today is I want you to take some time and pick up the book of Revelation and I want you to read it. Read it from beginning to end. Don't let some scam tell you, uh, scare you out of reading something that you need to know, especially if you are a follower of the Messiah. You are going to follow Yahoo and his ways, and you understand that Judgment Day is still coming, and you understand that there is a day that the Bible clearly declares throughout the Old all the way up to the New Testament, and that day is described as a dark, cloudy Judgment Day where he's coming back with an iron sepher and fire, not to judge whether or not you are Israelite, but to judge whether or not you are righteous, because it's going to be the righteous versus the sinner. It's going to be the goat versus the sheep. So you can, we can argue about heritage all day long. We can argue about whatever we want. We can talk back and forth about who's what and who's this and who's that. But if you ain't living right and you are not declared by him as righteous, you are going to face some major judgment. And a lot of these things are, re, uh, are covered in uh, some of the books that they took out, like Second Ezra. He goes into complete detail of what it's going to be for those that are going to be punished. Um, Enoch also goes into great detail of what is going to happen to those that are going to be punished. So my point is, I want you to read Revelation because Revelation is the only book out of your entire Bible that declares that you are blessed every time you hear it and every time you read it. So you need to read it and read it out loud or read it to somebody else so that they can hear it out loud because you are going to be blessed just as you did that. That's what the book says. And this book also says that if any person takes anything from the words of this prophecy, so not the scam the church likes to say, oh, don't take from the Bible. Yeah, they did say that in the Bible uh, elsewhere. But the only other time that that was said was when Moses said it. And that was back in the Old Testament. So what they have scamified and done today is I've heard that, that, that scripture used over and over again, even in preacher sermons. Oh, you know, the scripture said, don't take anything from the scripture. You know, you, you're you going to be cursed. No, 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 no. That tells me you didn't study. Because if you studied scam, you would understand that there was twice that that same subject was brought up. And it was brought up when Moses was talking back in the Old Testament. And then it was brought up in Revelation. And that's the only place that it's brought up. So if that is being it brought up in the book of Revelation, you better take the prophecy of Yahushua Hamashiach seriously. So I recommend that you read the book of Revelation from beginning to end. If you've got any questions, you can inbox me, message me, trust me. I'm not a student. I'm a teacher. And I promise you, if I can't answer something, I'm going to tell you I can't answer. And we're going to work it out and figure it out together. But I have spent the last two years of my life studying that Bible inside and out, studying the books that they took out, studying that Apocrypha. I even read the books of Adam and Eve. I even read the Gospel of Nicodemus. I know every single, I've, and I read constant. I read over and over and over again. I, can, I probably read the book of Revelation probably 24 times in those last two years. 1,000% in several different translations. So what I want you to do is I want you to do the same. Because for one, if nothing else you're going to get from it, you're going to be blessed is what the Bible declares just by reading it and hearing it. So if nothing else, read it for that reason. But when you get to any of the things that you may have a question on, I'm the preacher that's going to say, inbox me and let's talk about it. Because none of these preachers today even talk about Revelation. Matter of fact, the last preacher I heard talk to me about Revelation was the same preacher that was screaming rapture. Scream and shout all the time. Shout, shout, shout. Well, we, we, what are we shouting about? You know, you can shout all day long and it be vain to the most high if you are not living right. So the reality is you shouting and dancing and, and praising means nothing to the most high. It means absolutely nothing. What you praying for? He ain't hearing your prayers. So if you ain't going to live right, he ain't hearing your prayers. So shouting and praising is good, but you better be putting some living behind that. You better be trying to line up with this book like the book says. You know, I can only speak for myself. I can't tell nobody else anything that they should do. But there is a promise that we are all going to die. That is one promise that we are going to. So that's another thing that I want to ask you. If we are all promised to die, which we know that's what the Bible says in the beginning because of Adam's fall. What makes you think you're so better than the next person that you're going to be raptured out of here and you're not going to die? No, you're going to die.
I'm going to die. It's all going to happen. We are not Elijah. We are not Enoch. You're going to die. I'm going to die. Our dirt is going, our, our flesh is going back to the dust that it came, as the Bible declares. But your soul is going to either be met by demons or angels. And there is a place. And the reality of it is, it happens immediately when you die. Ain't no scamify waiting room. No. You either go to paradise to rest and you won't see the calamities that's coming because the Bible declares that there's some major destruction that's coming. And when it comes, it's going to be so bad, people are going to be running into rocks and caves trying to get away from it, according to the, what the scripture says. It's going to be a dark, cloudy, terrible day. You don't believe me? Go look up Isaiah. Just type in Isaiah and go in your search bar and type in the day of Yahuwah. The, the day of, or in your translation, will be the day of the Lord. Type it in. Go to Jeremiah, type in the day of the Lord. Go to Micah, go to Malachi, type in the day of the Lord. Haggai, go to go you know, Jose, to type in the day of the Lord. And every one of the prophets talk about a dark, cloudy day that neither one of us have experienced yet and won't even want to experience. So my prayer is that I'm resting when that day comes. I don't know when that day is going to come. You don't know when that day is going to come. The scripture says we do not know the time. He could come tomorrow. But I hope. And I pray that as for me, I'm resting in paradise and I don't see what is coming. Now, if you are OK with and don't and don't care and don't think nothing's coming. Well, how you don't how do you how can you even say that out of your mouth when you haven't even died yet? So let's say you do die today and uh, God forbid you do die today and you were wrong. Or let's say it was all a scam when you died. I died today and all of this is not true. What, what's the worst going to happen to me? Okay, I would rather believe and have faith that it's true than to close my eyes, die, not know what's going to happen, and then have to face what the book says is going to happen. Because the church waters downhill. We don't even talk about hell anymore. To be honest with you, I can't even hear it. I don't even hear churches even talking about it anymore. I can remember a day when I was coming up in church, you didn't even, there wasn't too many times you went to service where you didn't hear a message centered around heaven and hell. Choose you this day, which way you gonna go. You know, the altar calls ain't even the same no more. You don't even see people giving they putting their burdens on the altar like we used to do back in the day. Putting that down on the altar and, because you know what the altar brought? It showed humility. See, we've got leaders and musicians and people in church that don't have any type of humility anymore, which is why we don't even have the altar call anymore. The altar call brought out your humility because it showed you to you to other people that I'm just like you. I can fall just like you. I have faults just like you. But now we get into this secret one on one. Oh, he healed me overnight stuff. And now everything's being hidden and covered up. And instead of people fessing up and getting healed and allowing the most high to deliver them from these issues. They just sweep it under the rug, act like it's not nothing's happening. Well, you got to understand the scripture says, and this is in one of the books that they took out, that the angels are keeping daily record by the minute of everything that you say and do in this life. Everything that you say and do, you will have to give an account for. So the reality of it is, I'm not going to keep trying to beat myself up to make sure that you are saved. But whoever you are, I hope you are saved. And if, you, if you're if not saved and you don't understand Revelation or any of these scriptures that I talk about, please inbox me because we can talk about it. And like I said, I don't want to talk about it. I want to go to the book and we're going to pull up the scripture. We're going to see what the Bible says. Forget what I think. Everything I'm saying to you can be verified in scripture. So please do yourself a favor, read the book that says, the only book that says you're blessed by hearing and reading it. Please read it. Don't let them scam you out of reading something that the Most High has given us at the end. You can't receive the beginning and not receive the end of the book. I'm sorry. Especially when the prophets all spoke to the same day that is talked about in Revelation. Revelation also points out the man of sin who will sit himself in the temple and call himself God. The Pope calls himself God. You don't believe me? Google it. Google how many times that he called that one of the popes have called themselves God. When you study out the name God, you find out that's an actual deity. According to Google, God supposedly has a wife. 
This is why you cannot call him God. Because God is not even a Hebraic. They didn't call, they didn't use the word God. But we have made ourselves believe that that's okay with the Most High. You know, Yahuwah, Yah, Hallelujah. We say Hallelujah, and we and right on the end of that, you can hear the Most High's name, which is Yah, Yahuwah, short. And they didn't convince you to worship this false deity, this fake Christ, this Caesar Borgia that happens to be Leonardo DiCaprio's or whatever his name is, uh, 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 whatever, like, I don't even probably call him the wrong name, but his name, first name is Leonardo, but he painted an homos his homosexual lover. And, and that has infiltrated and made it into this painting of Jesus. And whether he's white or black, the scripture says that not to have any images, whether male or female. That's what the scripture says. You don't believe me? Go to Exodus. Read it. N no images. So if you've given me an image of anything and you've attached that name to it, you have psychologically put in my brain that this is what he looks like. And I'm worshiping, worshiping him, un not knowing that I'm worshiping him. Because you told me that. You need to study to show yourself approved. And the best way to study is to get in the book of Revelation. Because Revelation reveals a lot of things. And I will tell you, like, when I first started reading Revelation and all the books that I read over the last two years, I got into translations that I could understand. So I'll tell you the same thing. Get Pick a translation. I don't care if it's an English trans, whatever. Just pick one and read that book. And then go back in and read your King James Version and then go get in. And I, I read from the Sefer, so I recommend you just buy the Sefer for $20 and you've got the Hebraic Scriptures right there. Yahuwah's name, Yahuwah in the book. Yahusha's name, Yahusha in the book. Uh, they've got the books they took out. Enoch, Jasher, Jubilees, Maccabees, all of these other books that were removed out of the Scripture is put back into the Sefer. It's only $20. So I recommend you get that. Uh, and that's what I study from. Uh, but until you can understand what Revelation is saying, get into the easiest one that you can. Stay away from the NIV. They are complete satanics, or, uh, not satanics, but sa satanists, and you can study that out too. The people behind the NIV are scams, so I would not recommend you get into the NIV, but you can get into the NSAB or, uh, you know, maybe like in the beginning I was into the GNTD, but you've just got to be careful with a lot of these translations because they water down and take stuff out. That's why I like to stay in the Sefer. The King James says uh, adulterers, liars, uh, uh, thieves, uh, and effeminate will not make it into the kingdom of Yahuwah. Well, then when you go over to the Sefer, uh, that word effeminate was replaced by what was there before, which was Sodom. And I don't have to tell you the definition of Sodom. You study out Sodom, and you study out why the Most High destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And you explained to me why King James decided to put effeminate there instead of Sodom. And when you look at the definition of effeminate, that's just the man that's dressing up and acting like a woman. That is not nowhere near what Sodom was. But they did that because they, did, they wanted to soften the blow to make you think that this stuff is acceptable. I'm telling you right now, we are headed on a crash course and we don't even realize it. I'm just trying to tell you, it's almost like it's 1145 and, and it's about to be 12 o'clock and I'm trying to warn you. I'm trying to, if you got 15 minutes left and you think you got a whole hour, you got 15 minutes left to get it right. Don't be judged for worshiping false gods or false deities because you didn't want to take the time out to study. I am the Minister ML. Be blessed on purpose and have a wonderful, blessed Sabbath day.